Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Mathieu and I'll take you through the steps in this tutorial of going from an original motorcycle part to a full carbon fiber part. So I'll explain everything in detail from the mold preparations, the mold making, getting the molds ready to uh, start the carbon fiber parts. We'll go through a resin infusion process. So this is full carbon, so this is a real deal. It's not skinning apart. And I'll also show you how to finish the parts. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how much weight we saved uh, by using te this technique of replicating this part in carbon fiber. So it's all starting with the original part. So I think this is a polypropylene part and it's a front uh, disc brake cover from a motorcycle. So everything starts with like closing the gaps to avoid having the, the resin of the molds seeping through these molds, locking the parts into the mold later on. So I'm using some flute boards. So here's like a cool trick. Um, the flute boards is mostly like oriented in channels in one direction. If you cut through uh, like the top layer of the flute boards, you can also bend it. So this is how I've bend it this uh, flute boards around the difficult corner in this part. So once everything is closed, I'm positioning everything onto a flat shape. So this will be the flange of the mold later on. And then it's just a matter of using some wax, like to fill in the gaps all around the part, uh, connecting to your flanges of uh, the mold later on. So I'm using like a cool little tool here. It's um, like a ball ends just to shape everything around in a nice and easy uh, flow from the parts to the flange. So now it's about cleaning the flute board because I've used my hands. Some grease might still be on my hands and onto the flange. So here I'm just using some aluminum tape to create like a better finish of the flange and going all around the corners. So here's the results after the preparations and now we can proceed to making the mold. So here are some more details. So some gaps are closed uh, to avoid interlocking and then it's just a matter of applying uh, a release agent. So this is like a very important part. If you're not using release agents, your mold might be stuck onto your part. So I'm using a mold uh, system. So it's from Easy Composites, it's a unimold system and it consists of three stages. So the first stage is the uh, gel coat. So in this case, it's a black one and then followed by a coupling coat with fiberglass and then at the end with the um, tooling resin. So what's so good about this uh, mold making system is that it's very stable, so it won't shrink and it gives you strong molds. So once the gel coat has cured to a, a tacky stage, so it still has to be like uh, a bit green, so to have a good um, bond with the layers coming on top. So how do you know? It's when you put your finger on the gel coat uh, it just has to stick a little bit, but doesn't leave a fingerprint into your gel coat. So here I'm using some 100 grams chopped uh, fiberglass strands with the coupling coat. So the catalyst of the coupling coat is McP Harner. Depending on your ambient temperatures, uh, the amount might vary between 1 and 2% that has to be added to the, um, to the resin. So once the coupling coat has cured, so this is mostly after around two hours, we can proceed to the next step and that's the tooling resin. So it's a thickened resin, so um, you'll need a bit more um, to create like a good mold. So the ratios are mostly like one of um, gel coats, one of uh, coupling coat, and then five volumes of uh, tooling resin. So just to give you a rough idea of how many materials you need. Um, I'm doing this in two cups, so to avoid uh, curing it too fast. So first I mix one kilogram, then followed by mixing it again with the second cup and applying the 400 grams, grams chopped strands onto the mold. So first it's like a bit of, of a more brown color after curing, it goes to like a vanilla color or custard color. So after uh, curing, so after one or two days, I mostly like to wait a bit longer to avoid bending the mold. So I just want to make sure that everything is fully cured. Uh, you can also post-cure 
your resin like the molds uh, to make sure it's stable till higher temperatures so now we still have some fiberglass on the edges that we'll need to trim off i like to use some tape just to make sure that i'm having straight lines on my molds because this will make it easier for the vacuum back later on coming on top so i'm using uh, a grinder to cut everything because it's easier than with a dremel uh, this is a quite thick mold so uh, at some parts we're at eight mils like eight millimeters um, so it's quite a, a thick and strong mold that uh, we're making here so after the cutting there's still some straightening of the edges that has to be done i'm using my permagrid tools and then after everything is cut we can clean the mold so it's very important to clean your mold you might have some grease uh, the filatin wax that was still onto the part sometimes under the higher temperatures of the exothermal reaction of the mold some of the filatin wax might melt uh, at some point so it's very important to clean it before sanding it otherwise you might push like contamination into your mold so i'm going quite rough on the flanges i do not mind going through the gel coat i just want to make sure that everything is flat because later on if you're using the uh, tacky tape around the mold you might have some ear like little air gaps uh, caused by the wrinkles into your mold so i'm straightening everything and make sure that the mold on the flanges is as flat as possible so once again cleaning um like you'll see the mold isn't fully polished because this isn't really a, cos a cosmetic part it's more like a practical part um, at the end the customer might even paint it so it's not that important to have like a fully flat high gloss uh, finish on the mold here so I'm just fitting everything again just to see if the mold hasn't warped then I'm using like a, a cool little technique is to scratch the mold so it's easier to see when you demold parts where you have your cutting lines um, and then we're getting everything ready for the next stage so that will be the uh, resin infusion with the full carbon fiber uh, being applied so I'm applying a first full layer so this is a 200 grams carbon fiber it isn't the prettiest carbon fiber but it's one that I have laying around it's very easy to lay down the downside is that the fiber orientation might like um, be a bit loose so I'm making some strange corners uh, but it's more important not to have any bridging into the part and as I said it's more like a practical use uh, part and not a cosmetic part so I don't mind having like misalignments some at some points into the the part um, so i'm applying three layers of 200 grams so this will result in a part of 0 0.6 millimeters and then i'm just cleaning everything to make sure that i don't have loose strands of carbon fiber onto the flange um, making it possible to have air gaps into uh, your vacuum system later on so here's like a thing that is a bit different that I wanted to try here so mostly the next step would be using peel ply I'm using some bread wrap so it's a perforated film it is very easy to apply and mostly this will be used in between the peel ply and the infusion mesh making it easier to remove the infusion mesh um, as it's not that important to have like a peel ply, a peel ply finish um, I could like um, go quicker through the layup uh, not having to apply the peel ply in some small like little patches into this part because it's quite a complex part it's not the easiest part if you're new to composites i would strongly advise you to first make a flat plate before like trying these kind of tutorials or parts so the vacuum bag is applied um, you'll see some pleats this will ensure that i'm able to apply the vacuum bag all around the parts into like the tight little spots that are onto this mold uh, and making sure that everything is fully sealed before starting with the resin so i'm using an epoxy resin so this isn't the regular epoxy resin so it's an infusion resin it's much thinner um, allowing it to flow easily through your part so I'm mixing it with some fast and slow so you, from the easy composite system you're able to mix both to like adjust your curing time uh, onto your part so as you might see so this is sped up quite a lot so the infusion took around 20 minutes 
I'm just throttling with the resin to make sure it's not going f too fast because like most problems with p pinholes are mostly caused by having an infusion being too fast. So thanks to bread wrap, I'm quite, uh, I can quite easily remove the infusion mesh and then it's just a matter of like removing the little uh, parts of bread wrap. So the um, the perforated film. So would I do it differently in, this, in, a, in another part? I might use peel ply, maybe. It gives a better finish on the inside. It's also quite difficult to remove the um, little parts of perforated film. Um, but it's okay, like I want to try it and it gives like good results. So here's the part, I'm using some degreaser to see the finish, how it would look like in the high gloss. As you see, like on some points, uh, like the alignment of the fibers isn't perfect, but it doesn't really matter. At the end, uh, the customer might even paint the part. So um, weight re reduction was the most important thing on this part. So then I'm using the Dremel to remove the little excess around the flanges. And then I'm going with a 200 grit onto the part just to remove like any bumps or little scratches that were still into the mold. And then to remove the venting holes, I'm just using 80 grit sandpaper and I just sand away the back of uh, those venting holes, resulting in making the, the holes visible again. So um, this is like the, the last stage. I'm using 240, just going around the part and then just cleaning everything. So for the holes, these are visible from the mold. As you can see, first I drill like with regular drills, a small hole, so the pilot hole, um, that will guide the uh, 10 millimeter holes being drilled after. And then I'm using a permagrid tool to sand the edges um, nicely so you you might have some loose chips of uh, cutting so here is the weight reduction starting from 160 grams till 98 i might make it a bit thinner even so we might lose some more weight like half the weight i guess uh, but this is always the first part making sure everything is safe on uh, thickness and strength before reducing everything step by step. So as you might have seen in the start of the video, it's, it was looking glossy. Um, you can like reproduce this, this effect by adding some degreaser. Um, I'm just doing this, first of all, to have some good shots for the video. And secondly, I can see how the finish would be once clear coated. So that's about it for this video. I hope you liked it. More videos are coming. Make sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.